Hey there, today we will talk about the fundamentals of smart objects. This guide will explain what smart objects are and how to use them to create flexible, non-destructive designs. Whether you're working on mock-up projects or complex design tasks, understanding smart objects will help you maintain creative control and flexibility throughout the process. Let's get started. In Photoshop, a smart object layer is a special type of layer that you can easily identify by the small icon on the bottom right corner of the layer thumbnail. If you take a look here, this small icon indicates that the layer is a smart object. Now, let me show you how this works in practice. For example, let's say you have a shape layer. You can convert it to a smart object by simply right-clicking on the layer and selecting Convert to Smart Object, and there you go. It's now a smart object. This same process works for other types of layers too, whether it's a text layer, an image layer, or even an adjustment layer. Once a layer is converted to a smart object, you can edit and modify it in two different ways, external effects and internal effects. Let's start with the external effects. I'm going to work with a shape layer here. Now, we can apply external effects like layer styles. For example, let's add a stroke or an inner glow. If I go to the effects menu and select inner glow, you'll notice it immediately changes the look of the smart object. We can also change the stroke value, increase it, or even add a drop shadow, just like this. Now, let's move on to internal effects. To edit the smart object internally, right-click on the smart object layer and select edit contents. This will open up a new tab in Photoshop, separating the smart object from your main document. In this new tab, you can make any changes you want, such as applying a gradient, adding a text layer, or making any other adjustments. Once you're done, simply save and close this tab, and you'll see that your changes have been updated in the main document. Another way to access this internal editing mode is by double-clicking on the smart object icon itself. Here, let me double-click on the icon, and once again, it opens the smart object in a new tab where we can make any changes we want. For example, I'll add a new text layer over here, adjust it a bit, and now I'll save and close this tab. Notice how the changes are automatically reflected in the original document. One important thing to note is that when you're working with image files like JPEGs or PNGs that have been converted into smart objects, the internal editing works a bit differently. Let's take a JPEG image as an example. When you drag a JPEG into Photoshop, it automatically converts to a smart object. But when you try to edit its contents, you'll see that the file opens as a flattened JPEG meaning it doesn't support multiple layers or additional adjustments without flattening the entire image first. For instance, if I try to add a text layer inside this smart object and then save it, Photoshop will prompt me to flatten the image first. This is because JPEGs and PNG are inherently flat and any internal changes require flattening. So, if you need to make complex edits, it's better to work with a PSD file rather than a JPEG or PNG. Finally, let's talk about why it's called a smart object. The smartness comes from the fact that any transformations, filters, or effects you apply to a smart object are non-destructive. This means you can reapply or adjust these settings anytime without affecting the original layer. Let me show you the difference between a normal layer and a smart object layer. To demonstrate, I'll first take this design and apply some transformations to fit it into the frame. Click Ctrl plus T to activate the anchor points. I will grab the edges, right click, and distort and fit it to the frame background. Next I will change the blend mode to multiply. The design is perfectly placed on the frame. Now, since this design was a normal layer, if I wish to add another design on the frame, I will have to manually repeat the transformation process again. Now, let's contrast this with the smart object. I'll take the same design layer and convert it into a smart object. I'll also apply the same transformations. The beauty of this is, I can double-click on the smart object, update the design inside, 
save it, and all my external transformations and effects will stay intact. Unlike the normal layer, any settings, filters, transformations, or edits applied to a smart object are retained and can be easily reapplied to a new design with just a click. This flexibility is what makes smart objects so powerful, especially for mock-up templates. Look here, I will add a new design to this frame, save it, and see how the smart object automatically updates with all the applied effects preserved. This is the true power of smart objects, they let you make changes efficiently without redoing everything from scratch. They are the foundation of mock-up templates, speeding up your workflow and giving you more creative flexibility. Now that you understand the basics of smart objects, you're ready to start creating and editing mock-up templates. With this knowledge, working with mock-ups will be much simpler and more efficient. Don't miss the next video on the fundamentals of mock-up templates. It will help you take your designs to the next level.